So in surgery, we are lovers of anatomy. Today I'm going to be going over the four must-have anatomy books. If you're a medical student or a medical student interested in surgery, if you're a surgery resident, a fellow, even an attending, resetting your board exams, I think these four books are the ones you're going to be really pumped about if you have them on your shelf. And I think I'm going to surprise you because this is not just four atlases. These are four different types of anatomy books. All right, let's do it. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon and I'm here to scale surgical education, get you comfortable on the wards, in the operating room, the ICU, and of course, on your exam. Today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. My best books in surgery talk was popular and some of you have been asking me what are the books I recommend. So today, we're gonna to crush anatomy. Now, like I said, as surgeons, we are lovers of anatomy. That was kind of the inspiration, the impetus for me to go into surgery. I loved being in the anatomy lab. I loved dissecting my cadaver. And if you're a student, I hope you are getting that opportunity to do a dissection because that is an incredible gift that somebody gives when they give their body to a dissection lab or a university to do that. And I took a lot of joy and I learned a ton from my cadaver. So today we're gonna to be going over four must-have books. I'm gonna put the links to these books down in the description below so you can check them out. And these, like I said, it's four different types. And what are those types? So if you're studying anatomy, you gotta number one, have an illustrated atlas. Now you might be able to guess what my favorite illustrated atlas is, but you gotta have an illustrated atlas. And this is important because anatomy is all about relationships. The illustrated atlas gives you these relationships. It's able to show anatomy in different perspectives, in different planes, so you can see how a particular organ may be related to arteries, veins, nerves, other organs, bones, muscle underneath. It's really important. The second book that you gotta have is a descriptive textbook. You gotta have a book that describes the anatomy, that goes through, gives you clinical correlations, and uh, builds on all of those concepts so you can take the pictures and what you're learning in the lab and really begin to relate it to not only the physiology but also clinical problems that you're going to see. So what's the third? Well, the third book that you got to have is a photographic atlas, all right? Now, especially for you medical students that are out there and you're learning anatomy in the lab, you're doing your dissections, this photographic atlas is going to give you an incredible reference to how a dissection should be properly done and all of the structures that you should be able to identify in that dissection. Now, what's the fourth book? The fourth book is a review book. Now, you don't want a book that's just bullet points of what you already got in that descriptive textbook. You want something that's gonna approach it a little bit differently. And so this fourth book, this review book, this is my favorite one. So if you stick around to the end, you're gonna see it. Absolutely loved it. I used it probably every day in my first two years of medical school and I still refer to it if I need to brush up on particular patterns. So let's get to it. All right, for the first book, this is the Illustrated Atlas. And there is really, in my opinion, there is only one Illustrated Atlas, and that is Netters. Now, it's 2022 as I do this video, and we are so fortunate that there is a new edition of Netters. Now, why do I like Netters so much? Now, number one, there's this historical value. Dr. Frank Netter, he's a physician, and he does these incredible paintings, all of these plates that are hand-painted by him, and they have incredible detail. The other thing that I like about it is, and I'm gonna show you an example here, so let's take a look at the thyroid. So in this plate of the thyroid, we're seeing an anterior view of the thyroid. You can see we see all of those relationships. You can see how the external carotid artery gives branches to the thyroid gland. You can see the veins, you can see the related nerves. But what I love about it is he's gonna show you the reverse on the back of the thyroid. What does that look like? How are the parathyroid glands related to the thyroid most of the time? 
okay? How are the various arteries, like the superior thyroid artery, artery related to the superior parathyroid gland? So in the illustrated atlas, not only do you get this fantastic detailed painting of the anatomy, you're able to see it in different views. You get that anterior view, you get that posterior view, and you can see all of the relationships. So I absolutely love it. Netters is the way to go. That's my favorite illustrated atlas. I think that's the one you should get. Check it out for yourself. And it's a new edition. It's the eighth edition. It's 2022. I think it's incredible value. Definitely check it out. All right, so for the descriptive anatomy textbook, there's really one. And this thing is a doorstop. It is heavy, it is big, but it is totally complete. And if you get this book, I think you're gonna be really happy with the descriptive anatomy, okay? And I wanna show you a couple of examples. So some of the things that I like here are, number one, so not only do you get a really great description of the anatomy, this is an example of the first chapter looking at fascial planes, but you also have these boxes that jump out. What are the clinical correlations? I like at the end of every section, you get this bottom line. It tells you exactly what's important, and that's really important for review because anatomy, it's a dense topic, and there is a ton to learn and memorize. So, Moore's Clinically Oriented Anatomy. This is my favorite descriptive textbook. This is the one that I peeled through, highlighted, underlined, dog-eared, noted up during medical school. I still have it, it is completely tattered, uh, but this is the best one, in my opinion. So definitely give this one a shot. So the third book, this is the Photographic Atlas. Now one of the things that I love about the Photographic Atlas is the correlations between the imaging and what you're gonna find in the dissection lab. So an example here, we have an MRI of the knee, and in the next plate, you're gonna see a coronal section through the knee, all of the important related anatomy, and you'll be able to tie that back to the imaging. So that's one thing I love about this. Second is the incredible anatomical detail of these photograph dissections. When you're doing your cadaver dissection, you're gonna notice it does not look like this. It is really, really hard to do a proper dissection. And by using a photographic atlas, you're gonna be able to refer to your cadaver, and then refer back to the atlas. I used to keep my atlas right next to me when I do the dissection, especially when, for example, I remember doing for the Barker Prize, uh, which was an anatomical dissection competition at the Royal College of Surgeons where I was a medical student. We had this Barker Prize for an anatomical dissection. And so I dissected out the facial nerve. And when I was doing that dissection, I had this book right next to me and I tried to make my dissection look exactly like this book. I have a few pictures of the dissection that I did. I did end up receiving, winning that prize, and I'm super proud of that. That was maybe that extra push that said, yeah, yeah, you know, maybe you can do this surgery thing. So that was a, a huge kind of turning point in my first year as a medical school student. If any of you would be interested in seeing that, I could definitely get you some pictures of that dissection that I did. So anyway, this photographic atlas, like I said, really important if you're comparing that cadaveric dissection to the textbook and you wanna find all of those important structures. In addition, sometimes in some schools, the way you'll be examined is having flags marking different nerves, arteries, veins, organs, relationships on a cadaver. If you're studying with a photographic atlas, it's gonna make identifying those structures really easy. All right, let's go on to the review book. All right, so the fourth book, the final book, is Instant Anatomy. Now this is a review book. You might see this in the library and walk right past and be like, Instant Anatomy, there's no instant in anatomy, the books are so thick, there's so much to read. This one is pure gold, all right? And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of what I love about it. So this book is all about diagrams and it really helps you memorize not only all of the branches of a particular nerve or a particular artery, but it also tells you the relationships. So check this out. These are all the branches of the external carotid artery, all right? So it's gonna show you where they branch off, in what order, and how they're related to other structures in the head. So let's take another example. Let's say you're learning about the facial nerve, so cranial nerve seven, and you have to describe the pathway of the pterygopalatine ganglion, or all the branches 
of the seventh cranial nerve. Well, this book gives you a diagram of that nerve. So you don't have to read a lot of text. You don't have to look at the illustrated anatomy and the photographic anatomy and pick it out. You get this fantastic diagram. And again, it shows you the relationships. It shows you the pathway. It shows you all of the branches. So instant anatomy, this is pure gold. Highly recommend you get this. It's a little bit older. There isn't a new edition, but it doesn't change that much. It's anatomy, okay? And these diagrams don't change. They just have refined them from edition to edition. Okay, so get this one, put it on your shelf. I think you're gonna find it very helpful. All right, so those are the four must-have books. You got an illustrated atlas. You have a descriptive textbook. You have a photographic atlas to use with your cadaveric dissection and before exams. And then finally you have a review book, that instant anatomy. That was totally awesome for me. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this. These are the four anatomy books that I recommend. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I put the links to all of these down below and there's also some bonus stuff. So for example, let's say you picked up Netter's Illustrated Atlas. Well, you could also pick up the Netter's flashcards. Now these are great. So for example, check this one out of the neck. You number all of these structures you're saying to yourself, okay, oh, what's number one? Is that the marginal mandibular nerve? Or, oh, what's, what's uh, this other number? And then you flip it over, you got all the answers, okay? So throw a few of those in your coat on the way to the hospital, on the way walking to your lecture, and you can review a little bit every day, okay? So definitely, if you have a little extra cash, pick those up. Uh, I think you're gonna like the flashcards too. All right, so thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't liked this video, go ahead, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We're gonna be having more videos coming out. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss any and share with your friends. I love that you guys are getting value from this. If more people are getting value, that inspires me to make more videos. If there's a topic you wanna hear about, definitely let me know in the comments. All right, as always, be safe, study hard. I'll see you next time.